Uh, we have another award to present. It's a new honor named for Barbara Macy. We have three representatives from the Arc of Contra Costa to help present the award. Uh, Amy Vitug Holm, uh, Lauren Yeats, and Claudia Lamb, if maybe you could make your way up here. But first, let me explain a little bit about the, the ARC, uh, excuse me, about the special, special award. I met Barbara uh, in 1991 when I first came uh, to California from Seattle as the executive director of the ARC of the Desert. And uh, we've created this ARC, this award, uh, because of Barbara Maisie. Uh, Barbara served as the executive director for 31 years until her passing on August 13, 2016. She was a stalwart, faithful, and influential uh, leader in the ARC California and throughout the state of California. Her long career was singularly focused on people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, and she never wavered from this commitment. After completing her graduate program and receiving her master's degree in rehabilitation counseling, Barbara began her career as a director, as a, excuse me, a direct support professional at the Contra Costa ARC. And she learned every aspect of the service provision until she rose to the position of executive director serving for 43 years. Barbara's service and dedication were well known not only to those within her own organization, but to colleagues throughout the developmental disability service system who knew that she never said no, but instead, how can we make this work? She accepted responsibility for other agencies and programs so that the community would never have to lose a needed resource. Uh, the Respite Inn, um, Care uh, Parent Network, George Miller Centers, and the Asian Community Mental Health Services are but a few examples of her willingness to support an agency in need of physical, uh, excuse me, of fiscal and administrative support. Barbara shared her expertise freely and her advice was widely sought and respected. Her talents were without limit. She was down to earth and had a quirky and clever sense of humor. I can remember Barbara, you know, sitting on the other side of the table from me and sometimes we just didn't agree on things. The one thing nice about Barbara is that we could agree to disagree. Barbara's signature commitment was the preservation of the Lanterman Act, and she worked tirelessly to combat any threats to the Lanterman Act. She enlisted many other talented people to join her in ensuring that there would always be legislation that provided the foundation for a meaningful life for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. So that when we started KTLP, and she said, Tim, would you come and learn how to be a teacher for KTLP, keep the Lanham and promise, how do you say no to Barbara? To honor the memory of this remarkable woman, the Art California has established a special award which will be presented to an individual who exemplifies Barbara's legacy, to a person who has demonstrated steadfast commitment in service to people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, has shown creativity and innovation in their service, has played a leading role in advocating for the preservation of the Lanterman Act, and has a career of sufficient longevity to have made a significant difference to people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Barbara's contributions were unique and had a tremendous impact on both individuals and the system of services. We are proud to honor her memory by recognizing an individual whose service and accomplishments are equal to Barbara's. And so now to come and make this presentation, to none other than Barbara's Macy's dedication to the Latterman Act as the foundation for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities to make choices about their own lives was shared by many of her longtime colleagues and friends. Collectively, they were compelled to take action to ensure that individuals and families could more effectively use the individual program plan, a process mandated by the Latterman Act to create a plan reflecting their choices and hopes for their lives. These efforts were accelerated with the fiscal climate, made it challenging for people to achieve what they needed to spend their IPPs. 
In 2009, uh, prompted by cutbacks and other threats to the well-being of people with intellectual disabilities, a small group began working together to develop innovative ways of reaching out to self-advocates and families to educate, inform, and inspire them. Our honoree today was one of the members of this group. Together with Barbara, Tita Bowers, and Chad Carlock, they developed the Keeping the Lantern in Promise, an ambitious project which involved developing a website, writing a training curriculum, recruiting volunteer trainers, and holding train the trainer sessions across the state. To date, over 2,000 people have been trained in the IPP process, including training sessions held at regional centers. However, this is only one of our honorees' many accomplishments. He is the longest serving executive director of an ARC chapter in California. His achievements include a major effort to highlight the effects of fetal alcohol syndrome and discourage consumption of alcohol during pregnancy, development of the Value of One campaign, building of the Wall of Respect, and in extensive work in criminal justice. He received a federal grant to address the unmet needs of individuals with developmental disabilities who are in the criminal justice system, where their disabilities may go unrecognized and therefore not considered during a trial, sentencing, or incarceration. Recently, he began a social recreation program for young parents of children with special needs in a local city park. Called My Play Club, its goal is to begin breaking down barriers at a young age and to provide networking opportunities for families. Over 150 families are enthusiastically participating. His work is highly admired and respected in his local area where he enjoys considerable support from local officials in the community. He has also been engaged and faithful member of the art community. By now you must have guessed that the recipient of this award is Jim Stream, the executive director of the Ark Riverside. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Sharon Nakam, a board member of the Ark of Riverside who is accepting the award in honor of Jim today. Thank you everyone for giving me this opportunity to be, to be up here for Jim. Um, he had a little speech. I've been very fortunate to be able to serve with him for the past seven years on the board of uh, as a board of director, uh, ARC member. Jim, Jim wanted me to read this speech because he's very passionate, as all of you know. But it's very important that I get make sure that's clear and everyone understands what he had to say because when Jim speaks, we listen. And um, that's the impact he's made down there in the Inland Empire, and we're very fortunate. He says... It is indeed an honor to receive this award, especially since it is given in the name of the late, great Barbara Macy. I didn't get a chance to attend her memorial service, so I want to convene a little of what I would have said had I been there. Barbara wrote a couple white papers about the Lanterman Act, and in them she laid out for all of us to understand why the IPP process is so important to people with intellectual and disabil de developmental disabilities. She identified two key concepts of the act. One is the important principle of independence and inclusion, and the other is the principle of choice through the IPP process. She rightly pointed out that there can be some tension between the two concepts and policymakers and advocates must ensure the right balance between them. At times, she, she felt that some of the changes that were attempting to be made in law were taking away choice. At these key times, she expressed the need to honor the IPP, and often she was a lone voice. Several of us felt so strongly about preserving the IPP process, thanks to her, and that, that led to, to our project we call Keeping the Lanterman Promise. Barbara was the inspiration for that initiative, and through this training, as well as other advocacy efforts, my hope is that we will be inspired to carry on her work. We are indebted to her vigilance and advocacy over many years and is one of the reasons she will not be forgotten. 
As for some of the initiatives our agency has conducted over the years, I must thank parents and advocates for pointing us in the right direction. Fetal alcohol syndrome disorders happen, happened when a parent called and asked us what we were doing about this problem since FASD is a developmental disability. That phone call got us started. The same can be said for other projects. These were mainly family members whose suggestions and pleadings couldn't be ignored. I will cherish this award as it is truly an honor to be chosen as its first recipient. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Sharon. And we're so sorry that uh, Jim could not be with us. We wish him a speedy recovery, and we'll hope to see him soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.